Uh, thank you for the, the opportunity. So I would like to talk to you about this topic that I found uh, particularly interesting, that is about the connection between GIS and the renewable energy sector. So this, I believe this is, um, from this presentation is a start of some ideas, some project that I would like to, to continue in the future. And this is kind of, uh, uh, I believe, a very important topic because uh, just uh, in the last years, uh, uh, maybe you heard about the Paris Agreement between the more than 196 stations, nations and the new European Green, Green Deal that uh, put uh, very ambitious goals of reduction of uh, emission by 20 uh, by 55% by 2020 30 and uh, the, the climate neutrality by 2050. So these is are very very important uh, goals and to be re uh, rich is a very important uh, big reduction of green and grass uh, house emissions in particular from the transport uh, for the transport sector we heard uh, also yesterday uh, the presentation uh, the, the final keynote how this is important uh, and so this is also because there is a big impact of this sector inside the, um, the emissions so what if we move to just uh, to transport uh, sector we see that cars and passenger cars are the major polluters and these, uh, there we can have two ways to reduce uh, the, the emission of CO2. So it's making a vehicle more efficient or changing the fuel use. Uh, as now, in say five years ago, uh, there were uh, around the majority of cars were uh, still diesel or petrol uh, cars, but it thinks that it is needed to evolution of this idea and to pass uh, to more uh, other type of, of fuel. So to to charging uh, the vehicle, uh, electri uh, electric vehicles. So for that, uh, uh, we should, oh, for sure, it's important to take in consideration not only the emission during the, the usage of the cars, but also the production and the dismission of the cars. Uh, but still, uh, there are uh, b benefits that we can see in the different graphs uh, from the, the, the passage and the, the moving to vehicle, electric vehicles. But uh, we have, uh, we have a, a problem because if there are, we are not charging station, we can, we are not, there is no diffusion of uh, the electric cars, but if there are no electric cars, it's not needed for a charging station network. So uh, my, the, what I'm going to talk next is about uh, which is now the state of the charging station in uh, Europe, how we can uh, emphasize and uh, we can identify the, the state of the art of, and which are the future predictions that we can found. So uh, what, which data we should use? Uh, the idea was to have a, a, a global uh, vision, uh, in at least an European vision, so we, we go over um, national data set, we, then we tested also some, some of them. Uh, so the idea is to use open, open street map, that maybe all of you know, is a global database, database more than just a map, with uh, uh, open license data. Uh, in that, there are uh, volunteers that map charging station. So they are mapped using this tag that you say amenity charging station. And what has been done is been uh, uh, used the open route service uh, that is a, a routing engine that allows to uh, interrogate the data of OpenStreetMap with this Phosphor-G software and to identify it to compute uh, different parameters that could be used for routing, but also to for create isochrons that now we are going to see what you can see in the picture here. Sorry in the picture here, like set the one point, you can see which is the area that could be reached from that point. So the methodology is composed mainly on four steps. So there is the download of the data from OpenStreetMap. Uh, I tested in the Lombardy region that is uh, where Milan is located in Italy. Uh, there is a wide, uh, with, with a wide area with more than 10 million people uh, living there. Uh, so there is this uh, first downloading of the data. Then there is the creation of the isochron at one, five, and 10 kilometers. We choose this distance because we would like to test uh, different uh, distances from, from the, for the charging station. And this can be easily done. Uh, let's say one kilometer means that is very close to every point that you have, so that is very reachable. And uh, to arrive to 10, that means that you need to travel a little bit to reach it. Um, so then we, this is kind of zoom uh, for on, uh, on a city of Cremona. You see that there is uh, the bigger one and then smaller and smaller uh, means that they are closer to the, to the charging station. Then uh, we can intersect all the uh, isochron they created before with uh, the road network. You can see here that there are uh, mainly some uh, orange areas that are the areas where there are uh, no closer, um, no, there are um, far, further uh, charging station than 10 kilometer or other area, you can see here in purple, there is this center area that is the, the center of Milano, Milan, where you can see that there are more, uh, more station. 
Uh, then, uh, so we can also have a zoom, for example, as before in the city of Cremona, you can see that the city center is in purple, so it's one kilometer. Going further outside the, the city, there are, no, there are less uh, or no uh, charging station mapped. Then we can create some statistics, so we can identify it also divided by class. We can see that the 17%, the 17 percentage of the street network uh, is uh, uh, inside one kilometer from the charging station, while uh, you can see that the majority is, uh, uh, however, under the five kilometer area for all the region. You can see also in, in the graph below. So what has been done, this test that done in the Lombardy region has been repeated in other different areas. So we can s we choose, uh, uh, choose four different uh, uh, regions. Uh, you can, let's say, we have Lombardy as before, we have Piedmont where there is Turin, we have uh, Lazio where is uh, Rome, and uh, Sicily. Uh, so we can see that uh, uh, the distribution of the charging station is very different from the different region. So we can see that uh, uh, also the number is very, very different. We can see that in Lombardy there are more than 1,000, while it's one, one six of all the charging station mapped in OpenStreetMap in Italy. Uh, so what we could, uh, could see uh, here in, in the graph is that uh, uh, we can have very different situation because we have almost, let me see, almost more than 50 percentage of the, uh, of, this, of the network, the street network in Lombardy is uh, uh, within uh, uh, five, you know, five kilometers from uh, the, 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 the charging station. So this is means that uh, this is a really reachable network, so it's very easy to uh, for people to charge in their cars because they are very close to, to them. Uh, then we will be later some discussion about the fact that we are now considering only public charging stations. There will be for sure for electric cars, there is also the, uh, the pros with respect to, to fuel that uh, you have uh, uh, the possibility to charge cars at home. This is something that should be also taken in consideration. That's quite obvious. And there are also other regions where we have less, uh, uh, less, less diffusion of the charging station. So then we do also a comparison between different uh, uh, European regions. We have uh, also, uh, we choose which, uh, say, a, a part of Italy for the size, almost of the other are around, uh, let's say there are like province level, uh, apart from Estonia and Belgium that are a national level. And what we can see here is that uh, there is very, very different situation. We can say that uh, almost uh, also, also the density of the, the street are around from one to four, uh, kilometers of street per, per, per areas, so uh, there are more and, and, and more, more dense network and less dense. Uh, we can see that there are very that there are situations where the, uh, the, 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 the coverage is very, very high. We can see, for example, in Belgium that more than 75% of the uh, streets are reachable within five kilometers from a charging station. That means that uh, there is a very diffuse network. Uh, however, the, the, uh, the, different, the different region could have different needs and goals. So uh, it could be needed to, uh, to reach different, because we can see, for example, uh, just because we are here in Estonia, we can see that there are very, very uh, low uh, coverage of the network. So uh, this can be something that, let's I'll say, it could be very different from uh, region to region. So maybe a comparison between European region doesn't make sense because we are comparing a situation maybe with the same size, but with very different number of inhabitants, very different uh, also uh, charging station network, but related to how is really the network identified. We can see here a more clear uh, division because we can see that there are like really dense area like uh, the, the Paris area and, and also uh, the Madrid one. But we can have also, for example, Estonia that have 29 uh, inhabitants per, kilo per square kilometer. So let's say we are talking s s size similar, but also we reach another network. Also we can see that like, like for Estonia we have uh, 11 uh, um, charging station per one, uh, one 100 and 1,000 inhabitants. So uh, there are very, very different numbers that we, we can see represented in this graph uh, how the situation is, is varying between the different. So uh, we need them to compare this network with something that could be more local and could be more related to, to, to what is really the situation in that, uh, in that place. So uh, obviously the, the network we are talking about is the, is the fuel station network. So we need to compare it with something that have a similar coverage 
a, say, a similar goal, but for, a, for sure there will be different uh, uh, results to be obtained because we are talking to something that have also a different time that needed to spend in that location. We have different uh, a uh, uh, different uh, procedure that needs to be done because uh, you need maybe to, to f you can charging uh, you can f uh, put fuel in your car in for a fast time and then you can leave for the charging station you maybe need to plan a little bit more but then this can be uh, it provide let's say we can set it as goal so this could be the goal to be rich to have a, a very distributed wide network so we can see here some example also uh, regarding Italy oh, sorry uh, regarding Italy so we can see that uh, for, sh for every area, the, uh, the petrol network is widely more diffused and cover uh, more areas with respect to the charging station. We can see more for the whole Italy that uh, uh, between inside five kilometers, there are almost more than 80 percentage, while uh, for the charging station, we are less left uh, than 50 percent. So, uh, we but we can still see that there are areas with different behaviors. So even if, if more similar the behavior of the petrol station, there is also difference. So we can see that in Italy there is still some, some work to be done to be reach the same uh, uh, distribution. Uh, comparing instead the result uh, in, uh, in Europe, what we can see is that, that in Estonia and in Belgium, what we see before that they were, uh, the Belgium was the, the biggest, uh, the widest network, and in Estonia we said that there was uh, the lowest distribution. Uh, we can see very similar uh, um, behavior in the sense that we can, if we check Estonia, we see that even if the, the petrol distribution is low, because maybe there is a wider network and it's not needed to reach that kind of coverage of petrol station. As the same for the charging station. Moreover, as I said before, charging electric car could be charged also at home. Uh, for Belgium, you can see very similar result, while for, uh, for Brandenburg, so Berlin and area, quite similar, and also for Paris. For uh, Madrid, we can see that, it's, as for uh, all the area in Italy, it's needed a little bit more to, be, to, be reach, to, co to reach the same coverage. So, uh, also, using OSM data, what we could be using the awesome APIs, what we could be doing is studying the evolution in time of the number of charging stations and petrol stations. Starting from Starting from the petrol station, we can see that the paths are very different. But in almost all the cases, there, be, there have been a peak of the number of, of uh, petrol station mapped, and then a decrease. So meaning that maybe stations are closed. Uh, we can see that there are some imports because we have a very high increase of the number in very few time, in, very sh in a very short time. But almost all, all of them were reaching a high level around 2010. So this means that uh, OpenStreetMap is really representing, in particular about the, these topics, what is on the ground. So is that representing what is now, what are mapping, and if something's been mapping, uh, could be easily insert, insert into the, the database. While for the uh, charging station, what we see is that is something that's still increasing that could represent two things because we, we still see some peak, some high, some increase uh, rapidly. That means that there are import, uh, mainly this one, is, let me check the color, yes. is for Belgium, so there's been a, an import of uh, charging station in Belgium, meanings, meaning that this increase uh, uh, is uh, covering something that was already present before and now and was not present after. But we can see that uh, the, uh, the general trend in all the era consider is that there is more in, there is an, a coming interest into the, the development of, of uh, the charging station uh, network. So what we could be, that could be interesting is that uh, really OSM is used, could be used to study the evolution in uh, this wide area. So. The other point was, as we said before, that uh, we have OpenStreetMap, but we have also authoritative data set. Uh, this is something that, uh, for example, I just used this, the case of Italy. Uh, in uh, March 2004, 2024, uh, there was uh, um, a release of this uh, platform that you can see on the right, uh, this uh, Piattaforma Unica Nazionale, that it means uh, like a single national platform for charging points for electric vehicles. So there was this uh, pub public um, the product uh, distributed, but it provides just uh, or the list here, like that, or the map where you can see where are the charging stations. Uh, this is something uh, against, I say, every law that in, uh, proposed and invited the, the public agency because it's the ministry to uh, release the data with open uh, data, with a um, machine readable uh, 
uh, format and in, uh, with a compatible uh, uh, license. The license was compatible, but then they just keep it uh, in this format using uh, uh, this was a proprietary, proprietary software. Uh, so there is, for, uh, luckily, we have uh, this association in Italy on data that uh, uh, b before ask uh, to uh, the legislation to, to change something, in the meanwhile, it just uh, uh, create a script that uh, daily up, up, uh, update and download the data that are available. So using the data was possible also to make a comparison between the data that we saw about Italy, about OSM, and the data that are officially data. So what we can see is that uh, uh, for the official data we have, uh, in Italy, uh, the coverage is almost the 50 percentage. So uh, in OpenStreetMap there are 50 percentage of the, of the station that are in, uh, in, uh, into the official data set. So that means that there is still something, uh, some work to do for mapping them. And moreover, this, this connects also to the, uh, to the fact that, uh, the, um, that the, the network uh, the network that we measured before is, is, is better than the one that we have. The real uh, network is better with respect to the one that we have in OpenStreetMap. So you can see that uh, almost uh, there is all uh, the, the using the official data we reach, for example, for Lombardy region, there is a region where there is Milan, almost the 80, 90 percentage of the coverage between five kilometers. So uh, the official data are promising. Uh, and uh, uh, we have some just few cases where they're very different, for example, for the Lazio region, where there are just the one quarter of the data in OSM with respect to the official one, but uh, uh, in fact, uh, so we, we see that we is where there is the biggest improvement and we uh, go up uh, um, more significantly. That means also that um, these, uh, these, the missing station are in location that are more sensitive, are, are in location different from the one related to OpenStreetMap. So uh, there could be some municipality where uh, we have the official data, but the data is missing in OpenStreetMap. So we can see that there is some kind of uh, non, non trend about OpenStreetMap of less, uh, local knowledge of, uh, of mappers that map their, their area, the area where they know, and maybe there are some area that are left, uh, let's say, blank, where there are no active mappers that could uh, complete this kind of activity. So uh, going uh, and see all the different areas of Italy, we can see that there are very different behaviors. We see before Lombardy that considering the five kilometer distance o reach over the 80 percentage, while we have area, for example, like Basilicata, Calabria, where we have, uh, uh, let's say, a very low coverage that is un around the 30 percentage. So also the situation in Italy is very different uh, comparing the, using the official data. So this means that it will be uh, needed an improvement, a, a, a new network to cover the whole uh, areas. Uh, so this is some, some start, there are some, uh, yeah, some, some idea to the, the, to the future. For sure, there will be interesting to identify some real trends that are present. So the one related to the difference location could be something that uh, uh, could support uh, uh, the, the, the mapping where there are missing data, because this data that we have officially is not, are not uh, license compliant with OpenStreetMap, so could not directly import in them. Uh, another important aspect to be considered is the capacity of the, start, start, you know, the charging station. So we can have ch a station where it can be just charged in one car and we can reach up to five or more. So this can be something significant to be considered, considering also the time, that is the other point, the time needed for charging the cars. And also, uh, we should take in consideration how to evaluate the fact that the car can be charged also at home, because this uh, is uh, requiring a less uh, uh, number of charging stations because with respect to the fuel, for sure you cannot fuel your car at home. And so you need uh, a different, maybe a different network. So also uh, the, 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 the isochron that we see before could be used to identify which are the location where uh, the charging stations are needed more so, and where it's easier for, uh, for we using one, uh, adding just one charging network station to increase the network covering that spot of area. Also because, for example, we, for highways, we have for sure different behavior between highways and uh, uh, street, uh, local street. So uh, going to conclusion, the, the goal uh, of the carbonization we see that is big. There is a very big impact uh, on the transport and, uh, sector. And uh, uh, the number of, is, uh, this, we see we had this connection between the charging network and the, the number of cars, uh, electric cars. So if the, if the network will increase, also the number of electric cars will increase. Uh, the official data also are a real state of the art and could be used to uh, identify the, where the more data are needed. And also you can, uh, the code is, for sure is available and you can use it to test it and to, uh, 
to test it in your area and to identify or improve uh, the methodology. So thank you for your attention. Grazie mille. Uh, really nice, thank you very much. Do we have questions from the audience? Oh yes, there are. Uh, thank you, Lorenzo, for this uh, interesting presentation. I have a question and a comment. So, <laughs> question is, I didn't uh, exactly catch your definition of uh, coverage, because I have a point which is the charging station and I have a line which is the road, so I wanted to uh, understand uh, better what do you mean when you say that is covered. And then the comment is um, that you compare, uh, I mean, you calculate the density and you compare the line of uh, road that is uh, covered over an area. But uh, the road network is uneven. So I, I personally would understand it better if you would, would compare uh, the covered uh, road over the whole network. So line over line. Thank you. So for uh, the definition of area coverage is really the, the intersection between the network and the area coverage. So when we talk, for answer, so in the other point about the, uh, let's say an area is covered, that means that the street of in, each, in that area could be reached between inside one kilo, in, say, we say the purple area is one kilometer far away from a, from a charging station. So every point on, this, on that street could be in one kilometer reached from, uh, to a, could reach a charging station. For the other point, uh, I always refer to this concept of, uh, say, the area is covered, means that the street on that area could be reached uh, between a certain distance. It's always done uh, uh, considering the street, the street network. So uh, the, um, the streets, the distance, per obviously, uh, I didn't say it, but using the open, uh, open routes uh, services, what I've done is then really calculating the distance, not in space, but using the network. So it's really one kilometer far away from that point if there are uh, one way or different uh, also street with different uh, speed. This is not taken in consideration. This could be an improvement to consider also the time needed to reach one point. Uh, but this is more, was more on the on this street distance between uh, the, the two points that you are considering. So also later when we consider, say, just I just put here the density just to have an idea of uh, uh, which area we are talking about because maybe there are more dense area where we have uh, uh, more street, but just meaning that obviously you can see here it's Paris uh, and you can imagine that Paris and Estonia are very different between uh, um, different areas. So we have uh, also uh, less people in distributed in the area or more concentrated. That means that maybe it's needed a more number, a high number of uh, charging station because there are more people in that area that could be needed. That, but also this could be uh, uh, on contrary because maybe on like very dense area like Paris or big metropolitan cities, uh, the public uh, transport could be more efficient to move people around the city or the suburbs uh, with respect to the, to the usage of, of cars. So this can be something uh, to be taken in consideration. Thank you. Okay, we have one more. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Lorenzo, for the talk. I think I am the one who did that import that you noticed, uh, with full station in 2017. Uh, we got official data from Shell uh, <laughs> Fuel Company. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so, um, really interesting talk, uh, a lot of numbers, and it really makes you think, like, how could you improve it? Like, for example, uh, I really don't care how many charging stations there are there. I'm from Estonia, I know that yeah, there are long stretches of roads without any fuel stations, but you're not thinking about the number. You uh, must think like whether you would be stranded in a forest with no charge in your car. So you could also apply like population density, road network density to that, and also like uh, whether there are spaces, uh, commercial spaces to rent for charging stations. So, and it takes like a commercial angle from that. Like, uh, there are only a few steps until uh, this becomes a system 
for f fuel station uh, companies to learn where to put new stations, how to optimize the network. So did you have any commercial interest in that uh, research? Thank you. So yeah, this one, one topic that could be covered later is in the future is for sure the considering the capacity. Uh, for sure the, the connection with the population will uh, increase the interest. So uh, if we will have uh, uh, official data of population, will uh, for easy uh, improve the research because we can try to identify uh, if the, we can see before that uh, the, dif the, the different network maybe that we have the coverage in, uh, in Estonia, this 25 percentage within five kilometer is uh, just maybe 100 percentage if we consider uh, uh, for people because maybe the rest of the network is just highways connecting big small towns and uh, uh, the rest uh, is for is, is they are just streets that were not really needed or that could be just one that connect more point for sure uh, the, the 10 kilometer this maximum distance from a charging station uh, means that then it's very close because for sure for with every car you can do more than 10 kilometer to reach a, a, a charging station so it was more to have an idea of the distribution more than the the, the possibility to charge your car in that point so uh, the connection with the population could be useful but then you will need to um, to consider uh, also maybe wider distances because you can uh, better uh, you see it's not it's not the time required to you to reach that point to charge your car so maybe if you can if you are traveling you can uh, follow you can um, say uh, go for a further distances, but then uh, you will, uh, you just try, it's just one occasion, it's not, say, the, the, day, the, the day by day where you can maybe go to, to work, you can charge your car while you're working and then go back to home. And so this could be some, uh, some consideration that, that could be done in future to take the population, but also maybe uh, also place to work and this kind of activity that could be uh, connected to. Thank you. Okay, uh, we would have time for one very fast question, very fast answer. And if I would not have to run this. Um, thank you for your presentation. Um, you mentioned uh, that your data could be in the future used to uh, map the necessity for new uh, charging stations. And uh, in that sense, uh, have you considered um, mapping on a smaller uh, scale, of course, also the occupancy, occupancy rate of charging stations, uh, because I think that could be uh, also a good indication to spot areas uh, where more charging stations are needed if you notice that the few that are there are, for example, always uh, occupied over a certain uh, time scale. Uh, because this, this is something I've been working on myself and I would be very interested to get some input uh, from you as well. Thank you for the question. Uh, yeah, this could be something that could be in future related with the, say, with the capacity and then uh, with the occupancy, uh, so that there were some research on that. But then, uh, uh, let's say, uh, this also needed to understand how to connect the capacity with the num say, Then you come back to the, to the discussion about the population because maybe you can have, uh, uh, occupancy could represent the, the population, but then will be needed also to add the, the, both the capacity and the occupancy to identify how also the network could be uh, coverage. The coverage of the network could be influenced by that phenomenon. So this is also connected with the time spent uh, at one location. So uh, you can maybe uh, have uh, in um, offices area, you can have uh, uh, slower uh, charging uh, stations uh, or faster in other areas. So this can be something also to get, was I put, think to take in consideration for the future. So to consider, to create like two separate network, uh, one related to, to slow charging cars for slow char charging uh, plugs, sorry, and the one with high speed. So you can also, uh, identify different needs that are the one that you need to, to charge your car for uh, during a long time because you spend in the office uh, in a supermarket or for fast because you need to travel or you spend less time in that. Thank you.